Hey folks, welcome back to Carter Redux channel. My name's Tommy. This is part three in the intro to caching with ArcGIS Pro series. In part one, I talked about what caching is. And in part two, we laid the groundwork for what tools I like to use for generating cache or cooking cache all in ArcGIS Pro. So in this video, I'm gonna cover three topics. When is it appropriate to cache? What are the limits of caching in ArcGIS Pro? And what tiling schemes should I use? Now, hands down, the most common question I get about caching is, should I cache this map? So when does it make sense to dedicate the time and effort to designing and generating cache for my web map? Now I've got a bad habit of answering questions with more questions. So why do you think you need to generate cache? Usually when folks answer this is like, well, my map is slow or it feels really sluggish or my image service just really feels really heavy and it takes a long time to respond. So performance, performance is a good reason to consider caching. Now, another valid option is if you want to take maps offline. In other words, I've got this map, I wanna bring it down onto my mobile device in a lean and efficient way. Again, caching is gonna help out in that regard. So we've passed the first decision point. Do I have a need for caching? Yes, great. Next, we need to understand a little bit more about the characteristics of your data, specifically how frequently is it updated? So if we've got weekly, monthly, quarterly, even annually updates, that data is probably what I would consider static enough to warrant caching. That makes caching a strong possibility. Where it gets tricky though with data frequency is when we've got daily or hourly updates. Now we're actually gonna to need to do some test caching to validate that our cooking process can be finished before the next update comes in. In other words, if I've got an hourly update to my data, I wanna make sure that it only is taking minutes to generate the cache. If you can accomplish that, caching is a viable option. Now we also need to take how our maps are being used into account. In other words, if we've got a, a focused application that is interacting with our map in a very specific way, what sorts of user interactions do we need to support with our map? Are we turning layers on and off? Are we querying the underlying data in the map? Do we need to support pop-ups? Are we doing some sort of data filtering? Now with raster tiles, we are a little bit limited in terms of what we can interactively turn on and off, but if we publish this as a map service, well, now we've actually maintained that connection to the geodatabase behind the scenes. So we can actually query, dig into the geodatabase and get a response back. So this is also feed things like pop-ups. Vector tiles on the other hand are a little bit different. In other words, we can author styles that mimic that that layer functionality of turning a layer on and off. We can also do this programmatically with the Esri JavaScript API to interact with the style dynamically to say, turn this layer on, turn this layer off, apply this filter, filter the data in this meaningful way. I'll have some videos coming out in the future that show you the details of how to accomplish that. Now, generally speaking, base maps should be serving as a visualization layer only. Right? And then if we've got this additional functionality that we want to support either through queries or pop-ups, perhaps we've got some feature services or hosted feature services or feature layers published to support that specific functionality for our application. And again, we can talk about that. It's a little bit getting a little bit down in the weeds more than I want to accomplish here in this video. So we'll table that for a future video as well. So now we're confident that caching is something that we need to do and it's something that we can technically pull off and meet the requirements of our maps and apps. Fantastic. But at what point does it make sense to perhaps consider something other than ArcGIS Pro to generate that cache? Here, I tend to stick with uh, the scope of our content, the scope of our data. Are we talking about continental or, or global scope projects that are gonna be generating down to very large scales? If so, maybe ArcGIS Enterprise is a better option, especially for our raster tile projects. Additionally, if we're going to be generating terabytes of cache over the course of weeks, again, is that really something we want to tie up our workstation with? This, again, probably a good consideration for ArcGIS Enterprise. Also, if you've got lots of base map projects that are happening on a recurring basis on a tight deadline, once again, I think ArcGIS Enterprise is going to be a better fit here. Now that said, there's quite a lot we can accomplish with ArcGIS Pro. If we've got state or county level projects that are generating cache onto very large scales, Again, I think Pro is a solid fit there. And even global projects where we're only kind of scratching the surface on the levels of detail. In other words, the first couple levels, ArcGIS Pro, solid fit. Lastly, should you use a custom tiling scheme? Now, there are a lot of good reasons to explore custom tiling scheme options, and I don't want to downplay the, the appeal of that at all. I'll be the first to agree that Web Mercator has its issues, but I want to make sure that you understand 
the implications of going the custom tiling scheme route. Now, what do I mean by custom tiling scheme? I would say this is something other than the de facto standard of a Web Mercator auxiliary sphere, or even perhaps a GCS WGS84 tiling scheme. So if you decide to go with a custom tiling scheme, you are, you are deciding that I am not going to be able to combine my maps with all those popular Web Mercator maps. Again, like we talked about in the previous videos, if the tiling schemes don't match, we can't combine our web maps with all those other web maps. Now, this is probably as good a time as any to point out that Arctis Online does have both raster tile and vector tile base maps in both Web Mercator and GCS WGS84. There's even a couple of raster tile base maps in Polar Stereo Graphic. So I'll have links to those item pages in the description below. So what does this mean for your custom tiling scheme hopes and dreams? I'm not trying to to downplay that. I'm not trying to, to, to dash those dreams. What this means is that you're probably going to need a host of base maps and you're going to be on the hook to deliver those and maintain those going forward. Things like an imagery base map or perhaps a tinted hillshade, various base map styles, not just your default vector base map, but things like a street map style or a topographic style, hybrid overlays for your imagery. And if 3D is a thing for your organization, you're also probably gonna need a 3D terrain layer, something called a web elevation layer. Now, if that sounds daunting, that's because it is. Uh, like I said before, this is a significant undertaking. Not only just the initial release and getting those out the door, but all the subsequent updates that need to happen for the care and feeding of these maps going forward. These are now squarely in your control. Some organizations love that idea. And as long as you know what you're getting yourself into, have at it. Just uh, keep me in mind. Let me know how I can help you navigate those decisions. If, however, that seems like too much to bite off, or take on at this point in time, then perhaps leveraging the plethora of Web Mercator base maps that are already out there is your best bet. And honestly, there's nothing wrong with that. As long as you understand the compromises that you're making by using a Web Mercator coordinate reference system. As long as your organization is willing to assume those risks, or if that's a non-issue for your organization, then go for it. Now, what sort of risks are there? Well, primarily there's the whole accuracy thing associated with the fact that Web Mercator doesn't use an ellipsoid for its data. Now, that's some very fancy coordinate reference speak. And I should probably turn this over to the experts. So here's a link to a great video from the 2021 Esri Developer Summit where some brilliant projection wizards, Boyan and Melita, will talk you through all the math involved behind why they recommend literally anything but Web Mercator. All right, folks, that's it. I think that'll do it for now. That was, that was quite a bit of information to throw at you in a short period of time. So if you've got questions, be sure to drop those in the comments below. Now, I usually don't do this, but we'll try it. We'll try it this time and see what happens. If you found these videos to be helpful at all in any way, go ahead and hit that like button. It's free and it helps the channel out more than you realize. So I appreciate it. Alrighty, folks, that's going to do it for now. Take care and I'll see you next time. See ya.